Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be this kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, the protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy, increase and multiply upon us your mercy, that with you as our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal, so that we lose not the things eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. Our first reading is from Kings. A man came from Baal Shalisha, bringing food from the first fruits to the man of God. 20 loaves of barley and fresh ears of grain in his sack. Elisha said, Give it to the people and let them eat. But his servant said, How can I set this before a hundred people? So he repeated, Give it to the people and let them eat, for thus says the Lord. They shall eat and have some left. He set it before them. They ate and had some left, according to the word of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us read together Psalm 145, found in the insert. All your works praise you, O Lord, and your faithful servants bless you. They make known the glory of your kingdom and speak of their power, that the peoples may know of your power and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Your dominion endures throughout all ages. The Lord is faithful in all his words and merciful in all his deeds. The Lord upholds all those who fall. He lifts up those who are bowed down. The eyes of all wait upon you, O Lord, and you give them their food in due season. You open wide your hand and satisfy the needs of every living creature. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and loving in all his works. The Lord is near to those who call upon him and to all who call upon him faithfully. Our second reading is from Ephesians. For this reason, I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth takes its name. I pray that, according to the riches of his glory, he may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with power through his spirit, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, as you have been rooted and grounded in love. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend, and with all the saints, what is the breadth and length and height and depth and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, so that you may be filled with all of the fullness of God. Now to him who by the power at work within 
within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ask or imagine. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus went to the other side of the city of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. A large crowd kept following him because they saw the signs that he was doing for the sick. Jesus went up the mountain and sat down there with his disciples. Now the Passover, the festival of the Jews, was near. When he looked up, and saw the large crowd coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread for these people to eat? He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, Six months' wages would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what are they among so many people? Jesus said, Make the people sit down. Now there was a great deal of grass in the place, so they sat down, about five thousand in all. Then Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them, though, distributed them to those who were seated. So also the fish, as, they, as much as they wanted. When they were satisfied, he told his disciples, Gather up the fragments left over, so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up, and from the fragments of the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten, they filled twelve baskets. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they began to say, This is indeed the prophet who has come into the world. When Jesus realized that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain by himself. When evening came, his disciples went down. His disciples went down to the sea, got into a boat, and started across the sea to Capernaum. It was now dark, and Jesus had not yet come to them. The sea became rough because a strong wind was blowing. When they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and coming near the boat, and they were terrified. But he said to them, It is I. Do not be afraid. Then they wanted to take him into the boat, and immediately the boat reached the land for which they were going. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. The place God calls you to is the place where your deep gladness and the world's deep hunger meet. This is a quote from Frederick Beekner in his book, Wishful Thinking, 
a seeker's ABC. The place God calls you to is the place where your deep gladness and the world's deep hunger meet. Paul's letter to the Ephesians speaks to this place where God is encountered. The Gentile Christians are now part of the early church, part of the body of Christ. The Jews and the Gentiles are one in Christ. Today's reading from Paul is a prayer to all the Ephesians. In these seven verses, he prays earnestly for the presence of Christ to be within them and to remain with them. He begins, I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth takes its name. Paul prays that they all may be strengthened in their inner being with the power through the Holy Spirit. He prays that Christ may dwell in their hearts through faith, as their faith is being rooted and grounded in God's unconditional love and grace. Paul prays that they may have the power to comprehend the spiritual mysteries of the infinite measure of God, the breadth and length, the height and depth of God, the dimensions of the spiritual reality of God's love and mercy, grace and peace. <clears throat> Paul prays that they will know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, so that they may be filled with all the fullness of God. Human knowledge is imperfect. In Christ's love for the Ephesians, revealed in Paul's testimony of Jesus' teaching and healing, of his passion and death, his presence revealed through the power of the Holy Spirit that brings them as followers to the fullness of God. The ending of the prayer is a benediction now to him who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than we can ask or imagine. Those words perhaps sound familiar. These words reveal gratitude, hope, faith of the one who prays to the one who will respond in love, compassion, grace, and fulfillment. These words reveal what God will do through us and with us, using the mustard seed of our faith, the place where our deep greatness and the world's hunger meet. Another quote from Frederick Buechner, from the Alphabet of Grace. A miracle is when the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. A miracle is when one plus one equals a thousand. In today's Gospel reading, John tells Excuse me, John reveals two of the many miracles Jesus did among the people and for the people. The first today, we heard the feeding of the 5,000. The whole of what was accomplished is greater than the sum of its parts. The parts being the crowd that had gathered, the time of day the hunger of the people, the compassion of Jesus, the questioning of the disciples, 
the boy's lunch of five barley loaves and two fish, the space where the 5,000 people sat, Jesus' blessing, the satisfaction of eating their fill, the leftovers, the leftovers that remained, the feeding of the 5,000, the miracle for the people, the whole, the gift of what Jesus gave to them that day. The people were in awe. This is indeed a prophet who is to come into the world. They wanted to make him king. But what Jesus had done for the people was not done with earthly power. It was done with divine compassion, love, and mercy. Jesus did not want to rule over the people. He wanted to encounter the people where they were. He wanted to bring them to an encounter with their creator, their redeemer, their sanctifier. He wanted to be with them where they were, hungry, in need, afraid, lost in some fashion, lost in some way of trying to be God's people, of belonging to God. John tells us that Jesus leaves and withdrew to the mountain by himself. He needed to be with the Father. As a human, he needed to be renewed in body, mind, and spirit. John reveals a second miracle. Jesus walks on the sea toward the disciples and offers them his peace. The whole is greater than its sum of its parts. The whole being the peace of Jesus, the calm of Jesus over our hearts and over nature. The parts being, it is dark, the sea is rough, the disciples were three or four miles out. They were terrified. Where is the place God calls us to? Where do we place our trust? In times of uncertainty, confusion, fear, mistrust, in need of a miracle, where do we turn? What do we ask? What can we give? God is our protector. With God, whose compassion, love, and mercy makes us strong and holy, may we pass through this life, through those things temporal, trusting that nothing will be lost and God will give us more than we can ask or imagine. We hear in scripture week after week the encounters of Jesus and the people, of Jesus with his disciples. May we encounter the risen Christ in prayer and in action as we live each day. And may we go out and reveal who Jesus is in our lives. The power of God working through Jesus as we come to God in prayer and in action, in faith and in trust. Amen. Let us say the words of the Nicene Creed. 
We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, of the one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified and for Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father as a son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the people are form four, found in the Book of Common Prayer on page 388. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world, particularly for Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Sean, presiding bishop-elect, Julia, President, House of the De- President of the House of Deputies, Matthew, our bishop, Mary, our priest, Jessica and Bob, our wardens, Connie, Deanna, Robin, and Sharon, our vestry, and in the Anglican cycle of prayer, the Episcopal Church in Jerusalem and in the Middle East. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. A prayer for the unifying of the Wisconsin Episcopal Diocese. Good and gracious God, we give thanks for your grace and wisdom during our time of discernment, allowing us to hear your call for the church in Wisconsin. Thank you for keeping our ears, hearts, and minds open to one another in order to always seek your will and discern your vision and mission for the church. Grant us now, almighty God, that some grace and wisdom to fulfill your mission as as a reunited diocese of Wisconsin. Strengthen us in unity and faith to be that church, that church that opens its doors to all people, shares the good news with all people, and brings the love of Christ to all people. Let us be Christ in Wisconsin and the world. All this we ask in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good, especially all the Burlington area churches, Love Incorporated, Transitional Living Center, the Women's Resource Center, the Diocesan Hospitality Center. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us, especially those in the armed forces and those deployed, like Irina Menas in our prayer cycle of prayer for Jerry Ramsey and Bernie Russo. Lord, in your mercy, comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, especially Louise, Emmy, Sue, Tom, Connie, Wayne, Sharon, Ruth, Cindy, Dorothy and David, Greg, Suzanne, Chris, Mary, Jerry, the Monteith and Rena Manus families, Bernie, Jason, the Weingard family, Jimmy, and Bob. And give them courage and hope in their troubles. 
and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, especially Jane, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Almighty God, to whom our needs are known before we ask, help us to ask only what accounts with your will and those good things which we dare not or in our blindness cannot ask. Grant us for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbor as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Thank you for joining the St. John the Divine podcast. If you're interested in worshiping with us, you can visit us at 9 a.m. at our church, which is at 216 East Chandler Boulevard in Burlington, Wisconsin. If you want to learn more about us, you can click the link in the description or visit stjohnthedivine.org. Just remember, we're the one in Burlington, Wisconsin, not the cathedral in New York. Have a great day. Bye.